Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a brand new video. So a couple of weeks ago, I posted the birth and labor story of my eldest son, Zachary. And way, way before that, I posted the birth story of my daughter, who is my youngest, Avery. So I thought I would finish off this little birth story series um, by sharing Eli's birth story. Eli was my second child, my youngest son, and he is currently eight. So once again, I am going quite a bit back and just trying to rely on my memory. Um, luckily, labor and birth isn't really something you forget as a whole, but there definitely are some areas that are a little bit more foggy, but I will get into that in a minute. So so if you haven't watched the other two birth stories, I will leave them linked down below. Obviously, quick disclaimer, this is a birth story. There may be a little bit too much information for some people's liking, um, but it is a birth story and there really isn't a whole lot of dignity in labor and delivery. Um, also, if I sound and look a bit rough, it is because I am feeling a little bit rough. Um, I drove home from up country yesterday and I think just sitting in a car with the heating on for six hours has just made me a little bit run down and feel a little bit unwell. But we are powering through. So, like I said, Eli is eight. So my due date with Eli was actually the 6th of September 2015. Um, my due date came and went with Eli, which I was quite surprised about because with Zach, my eldest, I went into labour on my due date. So my dates were pretty spot on with him. So I was a little bit frustrated, as I'm sure most people who go overdue are. However, uh, the next day, so the day after my due date, and I probably this is probably the funniest part of this entire like labour birth story is when I actually went into labour. So at this time, I was working as a self-employed nail technician, and I was doing it from home. It wasn't a lot, but essentially it was just a little bit of pocket money, and I had stopped doing nails for um sort of clients as such but i promised i would fit my friend in before i had eli my best friend and this is the friend that if you follow my channel i do talk about quite often she is all of my children's godmother so i was doing her nails and this was probably at around two in the afternoon and um, i kept having to kind of stop um, because I was getting these tightenings and this wasn't unusual for me at this point because I had experienced a lot of Braxton Hicks throughout my pregnancy with Eli so I passed it off as Braxton Hicks and I kept saying to my friend it's just Braxton Hicks it will pass it's not painful or anything I know they're not real contractions and at that point she kind of joked that she would try and give me all the labor vibes that she could whatever that meant it was we were just being silly um, so I carried on doing her nails and I was still kind of learning at this point so nails did take me quite a long time maybe two to three hours um, but I was stopping and starting and stopping and starting still not thinking anything of it um, but it was actually my friend that said to me you know these are actually really regular because obviously as she was just sat there she was kind of keeping an eye on how often they were coming and she said they're actually quite regular so the joke is that my friend sent me into labor with her labor vibes um but anyway so we'd figured at that point that it probably was starting um i phoned my mum to let her know that i thought it was starting but really things kind of went on as normal that day as normal as they could you know within the back of my mind thinking that i was probably going into labor uh, my friend actually stayed over for a little while after having her nails done. The plan was for her to actually come and um, watch Zach when I went to hospital with Eli. So she stuck around for a little bit just to see if anything progressed, but it really didn't. Um, so she ended up going home and I just tried to carry on throughout the day as normal. I made sure my hospital bag was fully packed, made sure everything was ready to go. But it was kind of, it kind of started to get a little bit stop starty. So um, the tightenings would sort of slow down. I'd get quite a big stretch of time between one. So I kind of shrugged it off that it wasn't really going to amount to anything. Um, so had dinner, went into the evening and I was still getting the tightenings. But there wasn't any real sort of pattern to them. If you watched Zach's labour story, you'll know that the, the big walk me and my mum took... Um, the day before I went into labour with Zach. So my mum actually came over and said, right, we're going to go for a walk. So we walked um, down to the coast, which where I was living at that point really wasn't very far, maybe like a 20 minute walk and it was all downhill. Um, so that, you know, that wasn't the, the work. Um, the work was walking back. So we walked down to the coast. I was still getting the tightenings. We actually stopped in Weatherspoons, which was pretty much down at the bottom of the hill. 
and had a drink i went to the toilet just before we decided to walk back and i actually had a show so i came downstairs and told my mum that i'd had a show and at that point we kind of figured yeah it probably was starting um the tightenings were still there maybe a little bit uncomfortable at this point but not really regular and not really painful so um we walked back up the hill again nothing was really regular or really kickstarting so my mum ended up going home at about half past seven and um carried on throughout the evening i had a nice bath i sat on the sofa just trying to time these contractions and when it got to a point where i thought they were starting to get regular i called my mum, i called my best friend and they both came over and we basically just sat i sat on the floor for a while we just sat for a while just chatting and um every so often i'd get these tightenings and i think it got to around midnight where it got to the point where i was having to start breathing through them they were becoming a bit more regular maybe every sort of four to six minutes and that is when we called the labor ward um so i had planned to just go straight to the hospital this time once again if you watch my last birth story to be honest Zach's labour and delivery really shaped the way I wanted Eli's to go and it shaped a lot of the decisions I made for Eli's um, delivery and for my labour. Um, I went straight to the hospital because I figured I would want an epidural this time so that was my plan. Um, so the midwives told me to come in so I did. I went in and I got checked out on the um, sort of maternity unit like the maternity assessment unit and I think they said I was around three to four centimetres. Um, at that point, I was still coping with the pain really well, so I didn't feel like I needed any pain relief. Um, we didn't want to go home just in case, you know, we got home and then we ended up having to come straight back again. So we stayed in and um, we were on the um, maternity assessment unit. We were in a little bay, but I was the only one within the bay. Um, so I decided to pace back and forth um, on this bay but lunging so I was doing lunges back and forth on this bay to try and get these contractions going and it did work so I think maybe it got to around three four in the morning the contractions were getting really really uncomfortable and um, at that point I said um, right last time i started to get uncomfortable like this my labor went really really quickly i wanted an epidural but couldn't have it so i think i would like to start getting things ready for the epidural now because i don't want to miss my chance again um so they agreed to that and um sent me up to the labor ward um so went up to the labor ward contractions were once again getting really 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 uncomfortable um they gave me gas and air and checked me again and i was at eight centimeters so I was getting a little bit nervous at this point, I'm not gonna lie. I said to them then, okay, get the epidural please because I really don't wanna miss my chance again. So the midwives went to get the epidural organized. Um, at this point, I was feeling a lot of pressure, but I knew, you know, I, w I was only eight centimeters, so I knew I wasn't quite ready to push. I was feeling quite backed up. I'd had quite a big dinner, which once again was a little bit of a mistake so they actually offered to give me um like a suppository like an not an enema but like a suppository to help clear me out i agreed to that because it lowered the risk of pooing myself while i was pushing basically so i had that and it worked but what i will say i went to the toilet that was connected to the the room i was in but it was a conjoint it was um it was like a joint toilet between the room i was in and the room next door and by this point i was in a lot of pain so i was quite fuzzy um i was kind of at the point where dignity was leaving the building but i wasn't so kind of out of it where i didn't recognize things and i noticed that the door to the next room was slightly open so I mean, I, I couldn't really get off the toilet to go and shut it. I was, you know, in the middle of contractions, but I remember feeling so uncomfortable that that door was open <laughs> and I was just clearing my body out. But once again, there is no dignity in labor and delivery. I did that <laughs> and I wish I could say I felt better for it, but I really didn't. There was still an awful lot of pressure, but I think that was probably just Eli making his way down. So got back into the bed. I was on the gas and air feeling a lot of pain at this point. 
and then the anaesthetists came in i got my cannula fitted the epidural was ready to go and i could see the light at the end of the tunnel where i wasn't going to feel any pain any anymore so they got me into the position where you know you kind of lean over a pillow um they started to sort of prep my back and um, I felt a little prick and I think that was just the anaesthetic that they use before they actually do the real epidural and I could hear behind me like sort of in muffled whispers she's not sitting still enough like she needs to sit, sit stiller than this and I thought I was sitting still but apparently I wasn't so at that point the midwife said let's just quickly check you again because I don't know maybe my noises had changed um, and Eli's head was there I was fully dilated <laughs> and I wasn't allowed the epidural and I thought to myself not again no like <laughs> so it was what it was at that point I was really really disappointed because I had you know revolved my entire birth plan around wanting to get the epidural and I still left it too late and if you watched Avery's birth story, you'll know that I actually requested the epidural. Sorry if you can hear the kids downstairs, by the way, it is Sunday, so everyone's home. Um, I requested the epidural with Avery when I was four centimeters because I knew my labor was gonna go very, very quickly. Um, but anyway, so I was 10 centimeters. And what I thought that was uh, quite funny is my waters actually hadn't broken at this point. With Zach, they broke at around six centimeters. Um, but anyway, I was 10 centimetres, I was pushing with the gas and air only, and it was what it was, there was really nothing I could do about it at that point, so I started to push, and um, once again, this kind of phase, the pushing phase, was quite a blur, it was with Zach as well. I don't really remember a lot of it, I was quite doped up on the gas and air, all I remember was that it was very, very, very painful. Um, there are a few little snippets that I can remember from that stage. One of them being that the Ring of Fire song was in my head. Um, because that is what it feels like and that's what I've always called it, is the Ring of Fire when um, baby starts to crown and it literally feels like you are splitting open. Um, the Ring of Fire song was in my head but in a really kind of fuzzy way because once again gas and air makes you feel like drunk it makes you feel bathroom drunk i remember that and i also remember um as i was coming towards the end of pushing i remember hearing that um eli's heartbeat was starting to drop a little bit so i remember feeling it and i remember feeling anxious about it but in that moment i also remember thinking i i still can't do it like I, I can't do it and I remember saying I can't do it you need to just cut him out I can't do it and my mum I can I could hear my mum's voice and I remember saying no you have to push now you have to push um so I did and luckily quite shortly after that Eli was born he was perfect he was totally healthy he weighed I think it was six pound 14 ounces so he was actually smaller than Zach Zach was seven pound two and I once again fell in love all over again. And I've heard so many people describe it this way in that you have a child and you wonder how, how you would ever love another child as much as the one you have. But it doesn't feel as though you're having to kind of share your love. It doesn't feel like you're having to divide your love between multiple children. Every time you have another child, your heart just grows that little bit more so that you can give just as much love to every single one of your children. That is the only way I can describe it. So I was completely beside with Eli, but he was perfectly healthy. Everything was fine. I checked out really, really well. I can't remember if I tore or not with Eli. To this day, I still can't remember, but I know I didn't need stitches, so that was great. Um, so shortly after he was born, I went and had a bath. I had a shower with Zach. This time I actually had a bath. Um, came back into the room, got dressed, and they were ready to discharge me. Eli was born, I think, 10.48 or 10... It was either 10.48 or 10.57. For some reason, I can't remember the exact time. But it was just before 11 a.m., and I think I was discharged by about one o'clock in the afternoon. So 
I went home really, really quickly after Eli. So all of the things that I had packed for him, all of the little baby grows to put him in after birth, they weren't used. All the pajamas that I'd packed, they weren't used. I got into my going home outfit. We got Eli dressed into his little going home outfit and we went home just a couple of hours after I'd given birth to him. So took him home and obviously my best friend and her husband were at home with Zach. Um, they are both his godparents, by the way, my best friend and her husband. They are godparents to all three of my children. Um, so they were at home with Zach. So took Eli in and I was so excited to introduce him to Zach. Um, Zach was absolutely obsessed with Spongebob at the time so we actually bought Zach the Spongebob movie DVD and that was Eli's gift to Zach when he first met him so we did that exchange and showed Eli to Zach. Eli was in his car seat and I remember it. Now bear in mind Zach's autistic but he wasn't diagnosed at this time. We didn't really know a whole lot. I think we were just getting to the point where um, the nursery was starting to recognise his speech delay so he knew he had some send needs but we just didn't know the extent at this point. Um, but Zach came over to Eli in his car seat and the first thing he did was grabbed his face and squeezed it. I don't know if he thought he was a toy or what. But that was their first interaction which is quite funny looking at looking back at it now but uh, at the time I panicked a little bit. Luckily Eli was fine, he didn't hurt him at all and Zach was in love with Eli. He was so besotted with Eli and oh, do you know, I can still remember now when Zach was little and he learned how to say Eli's name and he used to go E-I, E-I, that was the cutest thing. Um, but yeah, and that was it. I was a mum of two. Um, so that's Eli's birth story. I am fully aware that that was a very, very quick story and this will be quite a short video, probably shorter than Zach's birth story actually, but Eli's labour and delivery was very, very, very straightforward. So I think, I think my labour with Eli was maybe just over 18 hours, so marginally shorter, shorter than Zach's. I think Zach's labour was about 23 hours, so a little bit shorter than Zach, but still quite long, but not as long as a lot of people's. And I think I am very, very, very lucky to have had my babies so close to their due dates, both of them. I know that a lot of people can go very, very overdue and need to be induced. I was really lucky. I didn't actually need that with any of my babies. My dates were pretty spot on and my babies were ready to come out when they were supposed to, which was great. So I hope you enjoyed this little story time along with the other two. Like I said, if you've not watched those ones, then I will leave them linked down below. Um, and with that said, I will see you guys in a few days with another normal vlog. Bye guys.